Welcome to Be Smart Together. I mainly focus on Power Query and Excel. If you're new, please make sure you subscribe and turn on the notification. Also, feel free to drop a comment to provide feedback, ask questions or let me know if there are any Excel, Power Query, Power Pivot or Power BI topics you're interested in. I saw a running total by category on LinkedIn. And suddenly I have something came across my mind that I wanted to try a function I hadn't used before, the table partition function. So, I decided to have a go. Also, it seems no one resolved the challenge with the list accumulate function. Here I am. Let us start the challenge in Power Query Editor. We have unequal sizes of invoice transactions, and we need to calculate the running total. The common simple solutions in Power Query involve the table group index, and some list functions. In the advanced method, you can use list generate or list accumulate functions to optimize the query performance. In this video, I want to try the table partition function for this challenge. It is purely a demonstration of how we can use the table partition function. So, what is table partition? The table partition function allows you to split a single table into multiple unequal sizes tables. Let's add a custom step and name the step, table partition. To start, we need to write a few variables. The first variable statement is to get a list of invoices. The second variable is to count how invoices. We can use the list count function to count the list, but the list contained repeating invoices. So, we need to use the list distinct function to remove duplication. We have 21 invoices, so need to split the table into 21 tables. We are now ready to write the table partition function. The first argument required a table. In this case, the previous step. The second argument asks which is the key column to determine the split. The third argument asks how many columns you want to split in two. We point it to the invoice count. The last argument asks for a function. We need to write a function to identify the group. The last argument asks for a function. We need to write a function to identify the group, says each invoice number. If you go through each table, it seems well split. Oops, one MT. More MT. Blended. More blended. It somehow didn't work with this method. We can use the list position of function in this case. Use the list distinct function to get a unique list of invoices. Then, point it to each invoice number. Go through each table again. It looks great and well split. It should now split the table into 21 tables correctly. All good. Add a new custom step, name it, running payment. We want to write the code for the running payment. Add in the list transform function, and start with an empty list. Add the invoice number within the curly braces, followed by the date, and payment. We want to add another to the list, the running payment. Use the list accumulate function. You can watch my list accumulate tutorial if you are not familiar with this function. The link is attached. The first argument is the index of each transaction for each invoice. We use an empty list as the seeds. We use an empty list as the seeds. Start the accumulator by combining the seed with another empty list. Add the list sum function to the second empty list. Then, add the list first end function to the list sum function. The list of payments for each invoice and y is what we need y is the index. During the iteration, the list will grow, and the sum function will sum the entire list. Add the last custom step to convert the list into a table. We need to use the list transform and table from columns to convert the list of tables into a table. Underscore represents each table. You can use the type table to declare the column name and define the data type. The column name is invoice number and its data type is text. The second column name is date. The data type is date. The third column name is payment. The data type is number. The last column is running, and the data type is number. Preview one of the tables. You should see each column is now labeled. Lastly. Use the table combine function to combine the 21 tables. Here is the running payment for each invoice. We have just been through the solution for the challenge with the table partition and list accumulate functions. 
If you are seeking one of the best solutions, you can visit the post for the solution with the list generate function. I have included it in the solution file. Also, I have included my best solution for the challenge, purely with the list accumulate function. I will briefly explain it. We start with the original data, followed by the add running payments step. We apply the list accumulate function in this step. For the first argument, we use the table to records function to convert the tables into records. For the second argument, we set an empty list as seed. For the last argument, we write nested let and conditional statements. The first conditional we write is to get the running payment. The logic is if we get an empty list during the iteration, then give us zero, otherwise, give us the last payment. We then take the last payment plus the current payment. This step is an accumulator. The next step, last invoice, is to get the last invoice number, and the current invoice step is to get the current invoice number. The last step in the nested let statement, reset, is to reset the running payment when we're in the next invoice. The logic is if the last invoice number is the same as the current invoice number, then do the accumulation by pointing to the new running payment step, otherwise, give us the current payment. In the output step, we add a new record field, which is a new column to store the value from the reset step. The final step, output, is to convert the list of records into a table. Thank you for watching, and I hope you find this video helpful. Please don't forget to click like if you like the video.